Yo, it's Death of the Cloud Chaser TV, man. We back up in this thing again, you dig? Yo, what's the words? Death of the Cloud Chaser. Yo, gang, y'all know what's going on, man. Cat Williams. Cat Williams did that interview, most viewed interview ever in a short amount of time, bro. 48 hours already at 15 M's. And that's what we can see. It's probably at 20. You feel me? It's, it's crazy. Like, at the end of the day, Cat Williams, he gonna tell his truth. He always been a man like that. He been standing on business even, like, for years, bro. If you think about the Dipset era, that's how he even linked with Cam Run. Cam Run and, and some of the other rappers, you know, just kept being so real. And then we hear about that Boosie situation. Boosie, like, yo, when I came out of jail, I ain't have much money. You feel me? I was living in a hotel in, in New Orleans. And uh, Cat, I went to his show, and he threw me a... Um, a towel and the towel had 15,000. He said, Man, I feel like crying. It, it meant so much to me, man. So, Cat Williams always been a part of the culture moving it forward. It's 2024. Ice Cube is responding to Cat Williams. Ice Cube says Cat Williams was 100 on a few things, but wants clarity comments about his role on Friday out the next. Hey, shout out to Shade Room. Let's get to it. Say, you know, we shot that movie over 20 years ago so you know people have different perspectives and it's been a long time um i also want to say you know every comedian that i've worked with every comedian that i've put in a movie i only put them in the movie because i thought they was funny i thought they was perfect for the part um i tried to put them in a position to win um that's what it's all about, you know. I don't, I don't, you know. I look at <clears throat> from, you know, Chris Tucker and Bernie Mac and Mike Epps, Cat Williams, um, you know, Ricky Smiley, Michael Blackson, um, Cedric, um, Cat. I mean, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Um, you know, all these guys I know are funny as hell. You know, they, I didn't discover them. You know, they were doing their stand up or doing their thing. And I, I knew that they were great and that they could act. And that, um, you know, if I, if I have an opportunity, I was gonna give them an opportunity. You know, to me, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, far as, you know, specific things, you know, um, Cat was 100 on, on a few things, uh, most of what he was saying. Uh, a couple things, you know, um, I just want to clarify. Uh, when we bring in a new, you know, comedian, uh, we do have them try out for different roles. So Ricky did um, give Money Mike a shot. Um, but when we saw him and, you know, we kind of saw how he moved and how he was, you know, um, auditioning, we decided that he would be a better, uh, you know, Santa Claus, uh, which was, to me, the perfect casting. Um, when we saw M M Mike, I mean, uh, <laughs> damn, I call him Money Mike. When we saw Cat, you know, when I saw him, he, I just knew that he was perfect for Money Mike. Um, and, you know, Cat, Cat, you know, said he wrote his role, which, I mean, the role was written, but he enhanced it. This is why Cat, um, was so dope in the movie. You know, Money Mike had a small role, you know, about as big as the Santa Claus role, but when we start filming, he was giving us such magic that, we kept expanding his role and giving him more to do because he was on point. Um, you know, when we shoot these movies, you know, for one, the scripts are fire or they wouldn't even do it. The scripts are la a laugh out funny. But we shoot the script, but once we get what we need from the script, we let the comedians ad lib, riff, you know, play with the words do they thing you know we give them a take where they can or two three takes where they can 
go off and do what they feel. Um, you know, sometimes it makes the movie, sometimes it don't. You know, when somebody gives you jewels, you want to uh, try to make sure that makes the movie. Um, so in the movie, there's the second thing I want to clear up. It was never, I would never shoot a rape scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday, um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they not raunchy. Um, you know, we did a movie called Players Club where the subject matter was a little raunchy, but but for the most part, um, even that, we we left it to your imagination. So the only reason that kind of stuff was in the movie is because you have three villains in Friday After Next. You have Santa Claus still in presence. You have Damon just got out of prison. Uh, sweating Craig and Daddy for the rent money and then you have Money Mike you know a pimp that treats his woman uh, you know like a property so Craig is always fighting the villains in the movie you know from the Joker Brothers to Debo and so we always we already had Craig fighting Santa Claus and the only real way to get rid of the other two villains was to have them go against each other and the the plier joke was always in the script you know it was never um, we would never ever show that you know that's not my style if you look at any of my movies um, so you know that was never a, a discussion you know we you know at, at that point in everybody's career you know we we would listen to a certain extent, but we wasn't gonna change the movie for it, for any actor. You know, we we do what we feel, and if, if it was a rape scene, it would have been in the movie. Um, it was no reason not to shoot it, <laughs> but that's not my style. I don't even like that kind of shit in movies um, on camera, and so um, you know that was to me a little discrepancy there. Um, you know, Cat, he, uh, he wrote a lot of his part because, you know, like I said, he was giving us jewels, so we were keeping the camera rolling. 